Welcome to Effector from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. This is the audio edition of EFF's email newsletter geared towards keeping you on the bleeding edge of your digital rights. Check the show notes for links to all of our stories. This is Effector Volume 34, Issue 3, titled How to Prevent Twitter from Going the Way of the Dodo. This issue was published on Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022, and I'm your host, Member Outreach Assistant Christian Romero. Let's start with our top feature. Twitter has a new owner. Here's what he should do. EFF staff responds to the latest news about Twitter with suggestions on how to move towards more privacy, safety, and control for users. In order to treat free speech as anything more than a slogan, social media platforms need to take user privacy and control seriously and take their hands off user data. Without any interoperability principle and end-to-end encryption, hot air about free speech is just a dead letter. Next up, we've got some EFF updates. Mobile MITM, intercepting your Android app traffic on the go. This post details the steps involved to configure an Android device to audit the traffic of any app installed on it, requiring no other device to be physically present. We offer technical guidance for Android users hoping to secure their privacy. Next, Victory. Maryland legislature says police must now be trained to recognize stalkerware. Maryland's legislature has unanimously passed a bill that will require law enforcement agencies to learn, as part of their standard training, to recognize the common tactics of electronic surveillance and the laws around such activities. This victory will help provide survivors of domestic abuse, intimate partner violence, and electronic stalking with much-needed support. Next up, podcast episode, Making Hope with Adam Savage. On this episode of How to Fix the Internet, Adam Savage, the maker extraordinaire best known from television shows Mythbusters and Savage Builds, joins EFF Cindy Cohn and Danny O'Brien to talk about the right to repair, tinker, and innovate. He says a fear-based approach to invention, in which everyone thinks secrecy is the path to a big payday, is exhausting and counterproductive. Savage challenges us to create a world in which we incrementally keep building on each other's work and keep making things better through collaboration. Next, scraping public websites still isn't a crime, Court of Appeals declares. After a series of volleys in the courts, a federal court has once again declared that the scraping of public websites is legal. The question at hand was whether access to a public website can ever be without authorization under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. The court noted that access without authorization implies a baseline requirement of authorization and that public websites like LinkedIn profiles do not require any permission to begin with. Therefore, access to public information online is unlikely to be a violation of the law. Next, Google fights dragnet warrant for user search histories overseas while continuing to give data to police in the U.S. While Google is fighting court orders in Brazil that are demanding wide-ranging keyword search dragnets, we can't be too quick to offer the company credit. That's because it continues to collaborate with U.S. law enforcement in phishing expeditions. We aren't aware of any cases in which Google has pushed back against keyword search warrants in the U.S. In fact, we have no idea how many keyword warrants Google receives or how it responds to them at all, because Google has kept that information entirely secret. Now, let's go over some EFF events that are coming up. First up, EFF's 6th Annual Tech Trivia Night. EFF is pleased to let Bay Area residents know that we will be holding our annual Tech Trivia Night in person in San Francisco on May 5th. This event will not be available online. Next up, SFPL Tech Week, protecting your account. Join Alexis Hancock, Director of Engineering on CertBot at EFF, for a virtual presentation on using password managers and multi-factor authentication to keep your account secure. This will be a virtual event, so everyone's invited to join at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on Friday, May 13th. Next, EFF at A New Hope. EFF is excited to be a part of this year's Hope Conference. We'll be at the Expo Hall and have various talks, so if you're interested in attending, be sure to register soon. Hope is donating 10% of all ticket sales to EFF through Friday, May 6th, 2022. Now we've got one job opening, Associate Director of Institutional Support. EFF is looking for a full-time Associate Director of Institutional Support to join our development team to develop and prospect institutional funders, organizational members, and donors. 
This includes traditional philanthropic foundations, corporations, and other institutional funders. Next up, we've got a few mini-links. First, artificial intelligence is creating a new colonial world order. MIT's Tech Review has a new series about the role of AI in further dispossessing marginalized communities. Next, Tennessee lawmakers aim to take oversight of police technology away from local governments. Tennessee state legislature is floating a bill to preempt municipal authorities from creating oversight over or restricting law enforcement technology. Next, OIG audit report on the U.S. Postal Inspection Service's online analytical support activities. The USPS Inspector General issued a report showing abuse of their social media surveillance program, featuring Clearview AI, including searches for protest with no nexus to the post office. Next, video doorbell cameras record audio too. Consumer Reports writes on their concerns about the audio recording of conversations up to 25 feet away by increasingly popular doorbell cameras. And for our last mini-link, mainstream coverage adopts Elon Musk's free speech framing, despite his anti-union, anti-speech, anti-worker history. Media Matters looks at the press response to the bank-financed Elon Musk purchase of parts of Twitter to see if they're covering the news, or just offering up press relations and clickbait. And that's it. Thanks for listening. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to sign up for the email version of Effector, which includes links to in-depth coverage of these stories and more. See past issues and subscribe at eff.org slash Effector. Before we end this issue of the newsletter, I just want to let you know that EFF is a member-supported, nonprofit organization, and you can help us protect digital privacy, security, and free expression for everyone. Donate to EFF today and even grab a bit of gear by heading over to EFF.org slash effect. That's EFF.org slash E-F-F-E-C-T. You can become a member for as little as $25 or even sign up as a monthly or annual donor. Thanks for your support, and I hope you'll join us for the next issue of Effector.